Lisbeck River used to be a natural river flowing through Cape Town. Uh, the catchment of the rivers in Newlands and Kirstenbosch. We're in Rosebank here and it flows through here and then joins into the Black River and eventually into the Atlantic Ocean. As uh, urban development has increased and people have started to build their houses close to the river, flooding events became more severe and had more severe impacts. So in 1926, the municipality canalized this river, so now it's a concrete canal, and today 70% of the river is canalized. Each year, as the sediment built up during flooding events, the city of Cape Town would bring in diggers and remove the soil in the canal. Uh, this prevented habitat and biodiversity from establishing in this river. In the last 10 years, the city of Cape Town has let the sediment build up and created these really nice soil banks on the side of the river. However, weeds have taken over these banks and completely covered the canal. Thanks to funding from the Dutch Foreign Ministry, we've been able to implement this uh, pilot project to rehabilitate this 200 meter stretch of the Liesbeck River in Rosebank. And we're really interested in the impact of rehabilitating this river and specifically the biological and social impacts of bringing nature back into a river in Cape Town. Behind me here is the Friends of the Liesbeck team and we're basically trying to clear all the weeds from this section but to leave the soil behind. The idea is to try and restore this section of the river, creating habitat, bringing in biodiversity, frogs, crabs, and particularly interested in the Cape Galaxia fish. As a start, what we did is we just created these natural weirs using um, rocks and other natural material. The point of this is to one, slow the flow of the river and get the water flow from the low flow out into the banks. That'll wet the soil here, and then in a month's time, we're gonna plant palmite into the soil. And these ripple zones here are adding oxygen into the water, so hopefully the crabs, the frogs, the fish, they will all enjoy this habitat. Um, and as you can see, the dogs are really loving it. People are really enjoying it. So this is a success, I think, so far. Okay. So this is palmeet, or Priorinium serratum, and we're planting it in the river for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's an indigenous species. It's adapted for riparian zones, so it grows on river banks. Um, and it has this really aggressive root system which grows out, it's adventitious, so it anchors the soil, prevents soil erosion, but it also anchors the plant. Uh, so when the river floods, this plant will bend over, allowing the water to pass over, and then it will pop back up and carry on growing as normal. We were able to grow these palmids without addition of any other chemicals. So we're trying to understand how we can make use of nature processes and uh, sort of adopt these as more of environmentally friendly methods. We created floating platforms where the palmies were growing and they were floating on top of a water that's rich in nutrients. And then we're transferring them to this place and try to make the least big uh, have a life and ecosystem and yeah, revive it basically. So I'm scraping the diatoms off the top of the rock it's like a brown algae, so it's pretty easy to notice. And they are basically bioindicators of water quality. So I'm doing a study to see how the water quality changes as we regenerate the river. Because uh, when you're out of a river, uh, it goes to a new base state uh, that will have an impact uh, on the water, uh, on the sediment uh, transport, uh, and basically in the end on the ecology. Uh, research on the interaction and understanding of the residents uh, regarding this rehabilitation project. Well, I've been mostly doing interviews to gain that information. It's actually, they were really happy about the project. They had some questions regarding the attention and how it would look like within a year. Uh, the benefits are um, is to better understand how the community reacts and is involved with this project. And it can act as an example if we want to scale it up and to do it at other communities. We face a lot of threats on the Lisbeck. There are developments that are pushing to encroach on the river. Um, and this, it's fantastic to see residents and community members coming out and doing their bit to make a difference. And I think almost regardless of what comes of, of this project and whether or not the planting works, it's already a success in terms of bringing people down and showing that community action can lead to change. Hopefully, maybe in the next 10 years, we would see a change where we get a lot of city involvement or authorities actually looking to protect our rivers and maybe encouraging lots more communities to participate and changing rivers that are polluted 
and making them um, habitable and living. If we look down at the bottom of the river, we can see what it used to look like with all the weeds choking the river. And then we look at what we've done now, it's such a big difference. We're all connected to the waterways or to the rivers in some way. And if we can succeed here, we can start to take the same concept into other uh, uh, canals across the city. So it's a very important project to actually kickstart uh, the city of Cape Town's livable urban waterways. Get this right and we can start to actually roll it out further. So the health of the city is seen in its waterways. And so when you start to look at our waterways that actually has got good quality water, doesn't get uh, spoiled by pollution and invites nature back into it, then you can begin to say that we've actually started to get a healthy ecosystem. We build in the health of it. And that health is really important as we build a city that is increasingly having to deal with climate change. It needs to be able to make sure that water becomes part of the resilient characteristics of the city. So the health of the city then is going to be seen in its waterways and let's start to improve it in that sense.